All right. Sorry for uh, embarrassing myself. I uh, always feel weird doing that, but I'm taking a class from Mark Rober right now, and he's into this mnemonic, Big Robots Pop Footballs, BRPF, and it stands for the Steps of the Engineering Design Cycle. So brainstorm, research, prototype, final build. Big Robots Pop Footballs. So I figured I would take a, a page from his book and try coming up with a clever mnemonic to help us uh, get through limiting reactants. So we're going to stick with bicep curls or B curls. And I've got a second problem for us. So it says 9 grams of silver nitrate react with 2 grams of copper metal in a single replacement reaction forming copper 2 nitrate and pure silver metal. How many grams of silver metal are formed? Okay, so let's just go through. I'll just see if we can remember what these are. First step, balance. So I'm going to take silver nitrate, Ag plus, NO3 minus. I'll even put these in for you. React with copper metal to form uh, copper 2 nitrate. plus silver metal, and I better squeeze the B curls out of the way. All right, so there's the chemical reaction. We gotta balance it. I think I need two of those to balance out the nitrates, which means I need two silvers on the other side. All right, so here we go. We did the balancing. We do the converting to moles now. So I'm going to take 9 grams of AgNO3 and divide by the molar mass. I'll show it this way this time. I want to convert from grams to moles. Okay. And I could be really appropriate. We're not really doing the stoichiometry yet. I'm just converting grams to moles. So uh, let's go say 1 mole is equivalent to, and I had these added up, but I'm just going to double check. Silver 107.9 plus nitrogen 14.01 plus three oxygens. That would be uh, 48. So 107.9 plus 14.01 plus 48 comes out to 169.91. So nine divided by 169.91. That's 0 0.05297 moles. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing with the 2 grams of copper metal. And that's just Cu. 1 mole of Cu has a molar mass of 63.55 grams. Double check. Yep. So 2 divided by 63.55 comes out to 0 0.03147 moles of copper. Okay, so I've converted to moles. So I'm done with B and C. The next thing is I need to check my ratio. So that's the R. So you'll look and you'll be like, okay, well, I, I look, I have less copper. I've got 0 0.03 versus 0 0.05. But I look at this and I'm like, okay, here's silver nitrate and here's copper. I need to have a 2 to 1 ratio. But comparing this to this, I do not have a 2 to 1 ratio. Twice, twice as much copper would have been 0 0.06 something, but I only have 0 0.05 something. I need twice as much silver nitrate as copper, but I don't have it. So based on that, I know that this limits the reaction. That's, that's what we're going to run out of first because it's less than 2 times 0 0.03147. Okay, if it had been more than 2 times 0 0.03147, then I would have said we would have had excess of that, right? But in this case, we have excess copper. 
which is probably good because silver is the expensive stuff, right? Silver is always expensive compared to copper. So it's probably good that we use up all the silver nitrate. Okay, so we've, we've now checked the ratio. We've identified the L in curls. So that's the limiting reactant. And so now we're going to solve. So to solve, I start with the limiting reactant, 0 0.05297 moles AgNO3. Oops. And I need to convert. Okay, so my question was asking me how many grams of silver metal are formed. So I want to convert from moles AgNO3 to moles of silver. And you're like, well, where do I get that ratio? I go look. Here's silver nitrate, and here's silver. And the ratio there is 2 to 2. I'll plug it in here. Or just 1 to 1. Okay, then we're going to take 1 mole of silver and convert it to grams of silver, and that's 107.9. So I would type this in as 0 0.05297 times 2 over 2, which is just multiplying by 1, and then times 107.9. So I get 5.7, let's say 5.72 grams of silver. Okay? And you should do a reality check. I started with 9 grams of silver nitrate and 2 grams of copper metal. So I started with 11 grams total. I ended up with about 5.7 grams of silver. That means the leftover is either going to be excess copper, right? Because I had excess copper. Or it's going to be like, uh, well, we won't have any silver nitrate left. So it'll just be all the excess, right? Um, copper, uh, it'll be the excess copper metal left plus um, any, let's see. Oh, and the nitrate part, right? So the copper nitrate, the nitrate didn't really end up anywhere. So we'll have leftover nitrate, leftover copper. Um, and so we should, you know, if we check the law of conservation of mass and we could go do more stoichiometry, we should end up with our 11 grams total. Okay. So uh, one more thing I want to tack on to here. Oh, and I should just remember, just reinforce this, BCRLS balance, right? Uh, convert, check your ratio, find the limiting reactant, and solve. Bicep curls, B curls, okay? Go through those five steps, you should be good to go. Now, I, I want to throw in uh, that there is something called a yield, and this is our theoretical yield. It assumes that we do as, or that the reaction goes as far as possible. So that's 100%, okay? And now that's not going to use up 100% of all the reactants because you are going to run out of one but it's going to use up 100% of at least one of the reactants and then stop because you can't do the reaction anymore. So what we just solved for is called the theoretical yield. Now, if I was in the lab and I'm hoping that later this week I can just go, you know, th this is something that I would have you do uh, a little mini lab, calculate some, some yields uh, and test some yields. Um, I could go do this experiment. Now, if I go do this experiment, okay. And let's say I run it and I, filter out and I collect my silver and let's say I only get uh, 4.80 grams of silver okay obviously my reaction didn't go as planned I either spilled some lost some on some filter paper uh, the reaction for thermodynamic purposes the molecules didn't find each other and I still have some silver dissolved in solution or just for a varying reasons, you're never going to get 100% yield. It would be great if you could, but you can't, right? It's that's like the theoretical max. So if you could collect all that you shot for or that you knew you would get. And so let's say I only got 4.8 grams of silver. Well, then to calculate the actual yield or calculate the let's call it percent yield.
you take the actual divided by the theoretical and then convert it to a percent by multiplying by 100. So if I actually in the lab was to collect 4.8 grams, but we were supposed to get, based on theory 5.72, then that's equivalent to a percent yield of about 83.9 percent. Okay, so this actually, you know, it doesn't mean it's meaningless to you until you guys see it in the lab. But if you're trying to collect silver, right, you would want 100 percent yield because you want that silver metal. And in certain reactions, you can get really close to 100% yield. Um, if the product that you're trying to collect is really expensive, you wanna get close to 100% yield. If you wanna do things quick and dirty and just get what you can, you sacrifice some of that percent yield. So this is something that chemical engineers, chemists, they have to kind of work through. Some of it's unavoidable, you just can't get perfect yield. Um, and you have to design processes around so that things become economically uh, and chemically like kind of feasible. And so um, this is something that we'll talk about a little bit in class. And I hope to do a little chemical dem demo for you guys and have you ca calculate a percent yield. So um, hopefully this example was good. Um, big thing to remember is sometimes the ratio is a one to one ratio. Other times it's a two to one ratio and so you got to be really careful so the stoichiometry can only be solved with a balanced chemical reaction and if you go through this kind of bicep curls uh, process if you're solving limiting reactants so this is only good for when you're given information about multiple reactants and you're trying to figure out which one runs out first so all right uh, I will see you guys in class this week and uh, there's probably going to be a couple problems for you guys to try as an assignment after this, but um, good luck.